Shalom, this video is Finding Meaning Part 2. So how do we find meaning? Well, first, here's how important it is. There was a, a study of 12,000 middle-aged Hungarians who found that those who felt their lives had meaning had significantly lower rates of cancer and heart disease than those that didn't feel this way. Another study of some of the world's longest-lived people discovered that having a sense of purpose of having a reason to get out of bed was a common trait in many of the world's centenarians. People live to be a hundred. People who feel that their life is part of a larger plan and are guided by their spiritual value have a stronger immune system, lower blood pressure, lower risk of heart attack, cancer, and heal faster and longer, says this professor of psychiatry at Duke who studied the phenomenon broadly. Okay, so the evidence is pretty clear, but how do you find that? Well, I'm going to give you the spiritual mathematical formula for that, and this requires you to do an exercise. Uh, we call this shlichut, or shlichus. What is the, that you're an emissary to the world to do? What is your job in the world? What is your reason for being? We believe that every human being is unique, and we all have a, a purpose. So what is the purpose? Well, we can figure it out about what leads to your calling in the following way. First of all, ask yourself, what are your unique gifts and skills? Make a list of what are your gifts and skills, and in what way do you think that they're unique? Your unique gifts and skills, what are they? Make a list. And then, after that list, make another list. Write down, and maybe this will take a few days or weeks to, to work out, but write down a list of your peak experiences. What provided you with the most intense feeling? Your peak experiences. And then third... What are your passions? What are you passionate about? I gave a sermon about this, and I mentioned that sometimes I come to funeral uh, meetings with families about a deceased, and I say, what is the passion the person had? And they look at each other like, huh? They don't have any passions. Maybe they, or they mouth some triviality. What are you passionate about? Now, add these things up. Your unique skills, your peak experiences, your passions, and when you process that, and you find the common denominator, you put all that together, then you can figure out what your calling is. And once you can figure out your calling, that is what is your primary responsibility to serve God, your family, your community. We don't all have to do the same thing. The Talmud says we are not required to finish the task, but neither are we free to desist from it. Think about it like a team. Different members of a team have different responsibilities. They have to do different jobs, and together they solve the problem. There's a great midrash about the lulav and etrog, the citron and the palm branch that we hold at Sukkot. They all represent different kinds of Jews, or the four species represent different kinds of parts of the body. You hold them all together to worship God. And so again, I think for a meaningful life, we need to find our shlichus. What is our special calling? And we find out that special calling by adding up our unique gifts and skills, our peak experiences, and our passions. And then we know the best way that we can do avodah, to serve God and ourselves.